Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. On the podcast today is Loretta Vini, and she's going to talk to us about activities for Alzheimer's at every stage. So thanks for joining me, Loretta. This is going to be fun today. Yes, thank you so much for having me. So tell us about yourself. I know that you're still caring for your mom. Yes. So this is year, oh my goodness, <laughs> 15. Oh boy. For us. I know, right? So yeah, we've really been, you know, through a lot of stuff. 15 so, years is a long, long time. And it's one of the reasons know, I tell people, you know, you think, okay, well, I'll just take time off of work or I'll cut back on work and, and do what I need to do for the short period of time. 15 years ain't short. It's a, it's a long time. And I think, um, you know, when you really think about it, you're like, wow, this is like a long time, but she's been so great, you know, for the most part, for the most part. So <laughs> She's, you know, had, you know, she had a really tough summer and that's when the, the, um, engaging activities, you know, really came into play because, you know, she had such a tough summer and, um, but we've been able to, you know, really do some, you know, good stuff uh, this year with her, even though I couldn't do a lot, you know, with her, um, you know, because of the COVID is, you know, everybody's, you know, talking about, but we were able to, um, have, you know, a lot of virtual fun, if that's what you want to call it, you know, being able to at least look through some of the things we already had. And, you know, I tell people, you know, not to spend a lot of money and just try to work with some things that you already have around the house. And so that's, you know, one of the biggest things. But I think that's one of the greatest mistakes that I made when she was first diagnosed. I bought all this stuff and it just reminded me so much of you know, a kid at Christmas and then they open their stuff and, you know, then they look around like, okay, what else you got? Like, okay, well you (laughs) opened it already. So they play with it for five minutes and dementia is very much like that. That is true. Nobody's ever made that that analogy before. It's very much like that. And so I say, and one of the things I say over and over in the presentations that I do is that what works today may not work tomorrow. And, and what think, works tomorrow yeah. may not work the next day. So you got to you got to have a lot of tools in your toolbox. You do. You do. And so it's you know amazing that you have to spend some time thinking about it. And I'm really fortunate in the sense that, you know, at the group home where my mom is, you, you know, have the luxury of having this activities directive. Right. So, you know, she's able to you know be there. So you have that. But, you know, some people don't have anything. So, you know, how I ended up investigating, if you will, all, you know, all these activities is because my phone just kept ringing. Everybody wanted to go, hey, what am I going to do with mom this whole time? It's, you know, it's a disaster. It was a disaster for lots of people. <laughs> yeah, and all like, that oh, isolation no. is not Everybody's good for hitting. any of us. It's not. And then, you know, one of the things that's been cool in a sense is and we were just I was giving a presentation the other day and we were laughing hysterically about it and and I was showing an app and one of the ladies said oh apps are just so far over my head I was like listen you're not gonna say, you know you go to your neighbors that got kids you knock on their door you say can I borrow your ten year old or bring him over and everybody's ready to get rid of their kid now so of course they would loan you their kid and so she was like yeah so I guess she was gonna do it but and she hadn't you know thought of that because right? there's so many fun apps out there that can, you know, really engage you and, you know, and that kind of thing. But really it's just, you know, about having fun and, you know, making them laugh and things like that. And, it, you know, you know, and it's not really anything. If you spend a lot of money, that's where you're going to be really disappointed. Now, some things obviously are, um, you know, do cost some money. I mean, before everybody got on demand, you know, you could buy the musicals. You know, my mother wanted, you know, was a big musical lover. And so, you know, I bought every musical known to me, you know, all the big movie houses from back in the day, King and I, Sound of Music, Seven Brothers, Seven Brothers, you know, all those kinds of ones. And, you know, we had a whole fact of movies and that did cost a fortune, but it was worth it. She loved it. And just in the last year or so that um, she hasn't been able to do it. So I would say something like that. The movies go across all stages. And that's, you know, really the first lesson really is, you know, whatever they loved up until the point of the diagnosis, keep doing it. 
until you mm-hmm. say they can't do it anymore. People stop. Oh, they got dementia. We can't go to exercise class anymore. Why? The, the teachers right in the front doing the exercises, all that, you know, they can follow along for years. You know, so why all of a sudden can they not go to exercise class? You know, yeah, that's and that's a good thing for thing. them to keep doing. Yes. So, you know, this, and, and, you know, what it all really came down to, that the fact that sometimes, especially if it's their children, taking them there or whatever, you know, a lot of times it's the children that's embarrassed, doesn't have anything to do with the parents or the spouse. You know, the parent or the spouse doesn't want anybody to know that the significant other or whoever has the mental I'm like what is the big secret and eventually it's going to come out but between now and then we can have a lot of fun you know that's the whole you know that's really the whole thing so that's the the first thing I saw when I start to talk to people about the beginning stages it's really about keep doing what they're doing you know what they've always loved doing you were talking earlier about walking a dog keep walking a dog and as long as they're not by themselves of course they'll be able to get back home you know by themselves and, you know, if they like bridge or, you know, any other kind of card games, keep trying to do it until they can no longer, you know, understand the game and, you know, and that kind of stuff. So it's, you know, just one of those things that um, I tell people to make a plan. So it's one of those things that you don't have to guess at. And there's so many websites that help you with, you know, if you want to do it with the neighbors. And you know, that's one thing, too. Um the thing I hate most about dementia, I hate so many things about it. The thing I hate most about it is it keeps people away. You know, your mm-hmm. best friends, everybody stops coming because, oh, well, you know, we don't have nothing to talk about. Why don't we just sit there? What's wrong with that? You can look at, you know, photo albums and all the kind of stuff that they used to do. So that's the infuriating part when people say, well, we don't have anything to do. We'll just sit there and kind of play with some different things. You know? But that, that's hard. It I is. Sometimes good. a short, you know, half hour, 45 minutes where you're just like, my mom and I used to go watch kids. Yes. We'd go to the park. At the thing. Yeah. And then we'd go to the pool. We'd get really creepy. We'd go watch the kids at the pool. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, well, see, that's fun because they're in gay. My mother, you know, way after she didn't know who we were, she would love watching my um, little granddaughter tumble. You know, she would roll forward and roll backwards and get up on the uneven bars of stuff. So me and my mother loved that. She couldn't tell you what was happening, but she still did have a good time. And I think that's one of the things. So so early stage, I think my tip always really is change nothing. <laughs> that's true. And then middle stage, that's when I, I think the hardest thing to talk about, you know, in the middle stage, that's when you really start to see, you know, changes. But now you can still try to, the different things, but, you know, change it slightly. So if they were puzzle people crosswords or whatever you get one with less words you don't do the new york times you're not going to do the new york times puzzle i can't do that on a good day so you're not going to really do the new york times puzzle you know when you're in the middle stage and and you can always tell when they start to get really frustrated with it because i i went from the huge word search book to the you know ones with just 10 on the page so keep doing the same stuff but just you know narrow it down and i think those are really cool and i had um some high school uh kids who used to go to my mom's before the lockdown, one of the really cool things is just quotes. So if you think of a, did your mom have a favorite quote or anything? <laughs> funny well, she'd always tell you, you'd bitch if you were hit with a new ax. Okay, see, so you would type that out in big letters and then cut it in half and let her you know, put all the other kind of sayings in and they would match the two words. Isn't that cool? They sell it on Amazon, but you can make it. So I tell people it's not expensive. It's like it's less than twenty dollars. But I was like, but if your family has, so it's sort of like the early bird gets the worm, and you know, so you just place, you know, put them together, and it's a, a washable kind of plastic, and you know, you could use them forever. But I was like, you know, give it to some high school kid who needs school credit for you know a, a project for seniors. And then you just, you know, cut it up and make it a cool game. So as they start to lose words, I encourage doing more things with words. So it was jogs their memory. So there's a lot of those kinds of games out there like that, that you can even, you know, sort of talk to. One of the things that I love, 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 I'm a trainer anyway. So I have always used little fidget toys and things, you know, on the different tables when you did live training and people could just fidget around with them and, you know, stuff, if they didn't make too much noise while the class is going on. So I just kept, you know, started using these for my mom. But one of the coolest things is a lot of times I have these balls that you can throw around the room 
and they're called thumb balls. So wherever you're, when you catch the ball, wherever your thumb lands, that's what you discuss. And so mm. it's about all kinds of subjects. So my mom was never a big talker, especially about her feelings. So when she was diagnosed, I wanted to know what she was thinking. And it really scared me because she was very quiet, other than the, just the sheer look of fear on her face when the you know the doctor said, you know, dementia. She was like, oh, that's bad. And that's pretty much all she said. So I wanted her to kind of talk more about it, and she really wouldn't. So I did two things. Um, I used this emotions ball, and it has frustrated and happy and scared and surprised and all kinds of things. So it has funny faces. So we started to throw this around and she would say, and one time I remember distinctly, she landed on relieved and she said, oh, I'm relieved it's not cancer. You know, her sibling died of cancer. Hmm. And I thought, wow, that's profound in a, in a big way. So this has done wonders in getting her to talk. And then my other story that I have talked with other members in a couple of the support groups that I am associated with is, you know, try using, you know, a hobby they've always loved to get them to really talk about what it is they felt. So for us, it was, you know, little Lego bricks. And so we would just get all the Legos out. And and what was so interesting about the Lego bricks was that in 2014, when she forgot who I was, um, you know, obviously as hurtful as that is, one of the first things I noticed though, I had a Lego keychain with a couple of little Lego people on the end. And she would, you know, she started jingling them around. And I recognized right away she was playing with the people. And the reason is I had made her all of these little houses. And as you can see, there's a Lego person in there. <laughs> Those are the coolest she- Legos that she's showing us. It's, it's, it's so cool because, it, and see, they have different, this was her favorite candy, the five flavors of life savings. And so mm-hmm. I took these Lego pieces and, and made that. And so what, what I think has been sort of profound for us, and everybody came to our house to see it, the, uh, the New York Times, the Washington Post came to see her building with the Legos because what everybody was intrigued by is before you would get off the Legos, if you would just ask her to do a puzzle or some dominoes or whatever it was, she would push them all around the table and, you know, and, and every now and then she could do the puzzle. Um, but when you got the Legos out, she just came alive. You know, her, you know, <laughs> and one of the, one of the funniest things happened, this guy came, we were in a PBS special and he came to our house with, I mean, these humongous cameras and he had three of them and he was the only one that came he had them set up in different rooms. And I was really worried because the camera was right in her face at times. She was doing a puzzle and the camera was literally right there. She never acknowledged that he was in the room, nothing. And then after we did a puzzle and, and um, I'll, I'll show you the, the dominoes in a second. But so after we do all that, he says, well, let's see the Legos. <laughs> I get the Lego. So she had a bag, a little um, Tupperware thing, container. With her, I put her name on it, and and so that was her little thing of Legos, and so we pour them out, and all of a sudden she comes alive, and and then she sees the man standing, and she says, "Oh, hello!" Like he had just come in, he'd been there for two hours, you know, right? Like Jesus, he's been here the whole day. Hysterical, but that is just how sort of amazing our connection was, because she still, you know, couldn't get out my name or anything like that. She just know she knew me, she recognized me, but she couldn't know how. But the whole time. You know, she was making things with the Legos and talking and all that, very engaged. And then if we put them away, she would go right back into her little blank stare, staying straight ahead, not That's... acknowledging. It's, and, and people think I make it up. And it's, she does it less now. But when you put the, I made her a lot of fidget toys that um, bend and twist and all that kind of stuff. And when I do that, you know, she can kind of, come alive and, and some of them then all that kind of stuff and see they go fit into the hole so whenever you do that she's like oh that's so cool so she can still push it around but she can't really um make it herself make so sense. she likes to see it oh this one spins and she twirl it around and do all kinds of things and that's so they're like wow she really does you know she really does do it you're like yeah you know, you, you know i tried to tell you but it is interesting, unless you see it, you know, you're like, oh, that can't really be true. But it's not that she didn't like the puzzles or anything. She just clearly remembers the um, hours and hours and hours that we spent building, you know, with the, you know, activities and, and things. 
And I mean, any stage, you know, you have something like the little dog. I'm sure everybody has seen the dogs, but you know, he, you know, his head moves, he barks, <laughs> his tail wags, his tail. <laughs> And she loved, they all think he's real. So her question always is, he's not going to pee on me, is he? Like, no, I just took him out. You know, that's my favorite question. And uh, and then when you ignore him, you know, he continues to bark and, you know, get your attention. Like a real dog. So if you, you know, if he's sitting in the corner and you have him on, I'd say every hour he'll turn his head and tilt his head <laughs> and then he'll bark. And you can turn the sound, the bark off. And he'll still just move around and stuff and let them know that he's around. And that really, they can do that the whole time. What I find interesting is, especially in the, even to the middle stage, you know, my mom will hold on to him for a while. You know, an hour or so, it's just kind of a long time when you get to the middle, later stages. So really what I think we're trying to do, Jennifer, is just, you know, keep them happy and calm. And I do a mix of things they would remember from back in the day to sort of, sort of newer things like the app. You know, what, would, what would our parents know about the apps? But, and so this is one of the things I'm saying is like an old thing. Remember these puzzles and they're different colors and you, you pull them up and match up the different colors, the blue and the red and the green. And, you know, you have a whole bag of these and fill all the holes and then it's a memory game. So you lift it up, you say, oh, yellow. And then you try to find another yellow one wherever it may be. And uh, here's one of the yellow ones. And they love anything wooden, things that remind them of the 1920s and 30s. So I have a really cool mix of that. And of course, you know, the, the thing at Cracker Barrel, the little things you jump at the, the Cracker Barrel game, yeah, everybody loves that. And so I have one of those, of course. And so she, you know, she loves that. So we keep all the pieces in the little factory bag. But she, and she can still do that one too, only because it's something for her to pick up and put down. I mean, it's as simple as that. And, you know, those are a couple of dollars. So that's why I said, and I think this, I think the wooden thing, I think it was probably about $10, but they have a, if you type in, um, you know, activities for folks with dementia, I mean, a zillion things come up now. And what do you so do? I, and like, you mean like in Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. Now that's, so if you just Google dementia activities, a lot of uh, very specialized active minds comes up. Active minds, I love it. But it's, it's pretty expensive when you consider what you can get off Amazon. You can get two or three Amazon games than you could. I, I like the fact that you can support, you know, some of these websites, you know, whose focus is Alzheimer's and dementia. But uh, at the same time, you don't want to go broke either. And then as a, yeah. a two, two women, uh, Robin and Rebecca, who own a company called Dabble Sack, D-A-B-B-L-E-S-A-C-K. They are both um, occupational therapists. And they started their own company and all they do are activities. One of them is called, she sent these to me. One of them is called do a dot art. And it's not messy or anything because when I say paint, paint <laughs> yeah. she, who wants to paint around it? <laughs> but it's so simple. It's just magic marker looking things and you just, and all, they make dots. And you can make all kinds of designs, you know, on your little bit. And it, and it says ages three to 103. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom just turned 92. So she fits right in. And um, I've done it with my granddaughter and um, with that. And so this was on the Dabble Sack uh, website, which is so cool. And my granddaughter was here, I guess, last Sunday. And we made all kinds of little dot things. She made a rainbow and she played this game where she did a whole lot of dots on the page. And then she wanted me to, you know, do the same pattern. You're like, oh, and so it was cool. It was really cool. We did that for a long time. And then this other one is remarkable. So in French, uh, the word yes is uh, oui. oui. And then in Spanish is si. And so this game, don't ask me why. It is called we see or yes. I don't know why they call it that, but whatever. And... There it is, we see. And it's it's bizarre in a way because all it really is are just pictures. And this is a really great for especially late stage when they're saying few words because you don't want them to be upset that they can't pick up the name. Because you could say this is a light bulb, but um also uh, looks like a flower. It does. And I don't know what these a whole lot of marbles in the band, but all it really is is just a conversation starter. So I had taken some really brightly colors out. There's a flower. 
oops, a flower, and they have an ice cream cone. But all you're really trying to do is stimulate some sort of conversation with, hey, I used to get a playground swing in here and a bike rack and stuff. Like, oh, I, when daddy had his bike, he parked it right there. And I was like, you said like a whole sentence. You're kind of like, wow. So, and it's just to evoke. A wow, or ooh, or, or she'll just say nothing and go to the next picture. But it's, it's hundreds of these cards in here, two or three stacks, and they're games you can play with it, or she can just flip through and see. You were talking about the cards and how they they yeah, resonate just, sometimes. Just, just you know, really um, give them the opportunity to you know not even find the right word, but just. I want to know, wow, what would she say about this? Because my mother was, is a uh, ice cream fanatic. <laughs> and so, you know, she would see the ice cream cone or, you know, some other really cool thing and just kind of say, wow. And um, this is interesting. I had given this to her. There are um, the water cooler bottles. Oh, yeah. And and she said, water. Wow. OK, I didn't think she'd get that. And so you just never know, you know, steam coming out of a, a grade or whatever. So, yeah, you know, or it could be smoke, or they yeah. might notice the windows in the background of that. Yeah, and this is clearly a, a really old building. So I just was interested. So we, I, we, I took it over. I, I got it in the mail. The ladies were nice enough to send me a couple of gifts. I had participated in some activities, uh, suggestions. So, you know, I logged on. And they were giving out prizes for, you know, right at, they were playing a couple of activities on the, on the Zoom. So I'm like, okay, this is fun. And I guess I got a lot of answers right. So she sent me, they sent me these games. And I, so like a week later, I took it to my mom's because they were doing, um, she had a virtual visit that day with the doctor. And so I wanted to um, show her some of the cards while we were waiting. And it's a perfect thing. You can put some in your purse whenever we visit doctors again. You can put some in your purse and just, you know, sit in a doctor's office and not, you know, disturbing anybody, not making any noise or anything. But that's fun. So just whatever kind of activities or, and I don't know um, how much this one is. I didn't pay for either of these, of course, as I said, this was a gift, but um, I don't think it's really expensive, especially the dot, the dot thing. That's, you know, probably less than $10. So again, just things, you know, and, and my granddaughter and I, she's nine, we sat here at my office desk and did it, but you can use any table for, you know, the seniors and, and do things. So I just tell people to, you know, use your imagination for whatever it is that you're trying to create for them. And, you know, uh, you know, some of the stuff is free. You just turn on music and let her dance. My mother, she, like I said, she just turned 92 last Thursday. She can still, you know, dance as long as you hold on to her. You know, this when she was 90, she could still dance without any help. But now you have to, you know, hold her hands and stuff. But she had a, you know, they sent me video and stuff. And, uh, you know, she had a good time. And that's all you want her. The caregivers bought her a shirt. That said, I turned 92 in a quarantine, in the quarantine of 2021, and none of you are invited. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. And she nope. looked gorgeous in this shirt. And so, so cool. And we had all the, I had sent over, you know, her gifts. And so I had some little fidget toys in there. And there's, you know, the little things you put in your lap. I don't know if your mom liked those, but you had the zippers and buttons. And she really liked that. So we did that. And, you know, some people, you know, you just have to, I know it's frustrating, but I think for effort we put into what might work, I think the more satisfaction, you know, they have. Because it's the saddest thing for me that I just can't take, Jennifer, is um, just that blank stare thing. It just, yeah. that tears me up. And so even if I just watch her, you know, push the thing around the table, that's better than doing nothing. And, and My so mom I, loved to just basically shoot the breeze. And it was great that she could do that with the other residents because. Isn't that cool? <laughs> oh, that was the best, the best reason to put her in a memory care uh, residence. Yeah. Because, and I've told this story before, but I don't think I told you. She, when she moved in, that was her, my mom's name was Diane. Okay. She befriended another gal named Diane. Now, as if that's not already confusing. Now let's Whoa. have two Dianes with that both have Alzheimer's. Yeah. So we had Diane and other Diane. And then wow. for a while there was other, other Diane. So there was oh, three wow. of them. It was like, good wow. Lord, ladies going to have to number you or something. Wow. And none of them remembered the other ones were yes. named Diane. It was just yes. confusing as sin. 
Yes. And my mom had her dog with her. And what we were visiting one day and my mom launches into the same story. She ta- starts telling about dogs. Yep. And the other Diane goes, oh, you've told me that story 803 times. And I almost hurt myself trying hard not to laugh out loud. Because first <laughs> off, I thought, well, know, dang, yeah. and how even the gal to- with Alzheimer's is tired of this this story okay that's and 803 is a pretty specific number it is so then about three or so months later <laughs> we're sitting outside they had a beautiful <laughs> courtyard and my mom launches into the story i've had dogs <laughs> all my life and the next thing you know other diane is repeating the same story and i thought well this is freaking elder abuse you've programmed this poor woman yeah. with this story it was Aww. i thought you know, because some people say, oh, you're going to miss that story when your mom's gone. My mom's been gone over. Well, it'll be a, a year, a after, year, more than a year yeah. when this comes out. But I do not oh. miss that story. I you do not what? think I will ever miss that story. I, I understand. I clearly. And it's so funny. And now, we didn't have it that bad at the group home. There is a my mother's name is Doris. There is also a Dolores and a Dorothy. So oh, we, do have the, we do have the three D's. Yes. Um, the and Miss Dolores is young. She's fifty-seven. Oh Lord, I'm been fifty-four. There, I think she's been there since she was forty-nine. Her daughter's in her thirties, uh, late, late, to early. I think she just turned like thirty-one or something. Daughter's very young. Ended up losing her job trying to care for her mom. Yeah, so they just fired another, her. It, and, to me, that's immoral. This country got to do is. better. Don't tell it me you gotta, you gotta work, you gotta work, you gotta take care of your family. And then when you was. can't do both, well, poop, you're on your own. Yeah, and so it was my crazy dog- because she ended up, she was in North Carolina where she went to college and she stayed there, got a job and got to stay there after she graduated from college. But then her mom was up here in Maryland and got sick. And she was on the weekends, she was trying to come back and forth. She had some siblings here, but they weren't doing anything. So she was trying to do it all. She eventually moved back here. And so she's been back here, but she came back right before the lockdown. Oh, Lord. And so I think things are a lot better, you know, for her in that sense. But she was, like you said, working her butt off trying to, you know, do that. So um, I always look out for Miss Dolores, especially when she wasn't living here. You know, I would take stuff from Miss Dolores, too, if I had little, because um, they don't disagree. It's not like kids fighting over a toy. They don't do that. Um, and my mother, only only with magazines will my mother say, that's mine. She don't want anybody to read her magazines. <laughs> but if you have, you know, one of the squeezy toys, have a lot of these and these and, and what is really, really great about the later stages that I tell everybody just focus on the senses. So have stuff they can smell. So we do the aromatherapy at night to help them sleep. I'm not a big drug person with that sleeping pill stuff and all that. Um, we use the aromatherapy, the lavender, which really helps to put them to sleep. So smell and feel and, you know, all of that and the hearing so we play the music and some of my fidget toys do click you know you can hear it and she love and they love the bright colors so as she progress she can still see and she can still read but you can tell the difference when she has the magazine which has a lot of pictures rather than just trying to read like read his digest or something which is pretty much all words so um we have gone to the really bright colors that they can focus on. And I just read somebody's article yesterday. I forwarded it to myself. I saw it on Facebook that somebody had posted. And it was like, you have to understand about also how the brain changes and how, you know, what they can see. So, you know, they get the peripheral vision as they get to the later and they can only see right in front of them. So I want her to hold this and then she can see the colors and all the stuff. So I was like, wow, I got it all right. Just like they said in the article. And I had not seen the article before, but I didn't realize the way they phrased it. And it was a colored picture. They looked at the different parts of the brain to say what was working when in in whatever stages. So I'm like, okay, I'm doing this right. So the domino things that she loves, and these are like marble kind of things. And I love these. And all she's really, she's not matching up the numbers. She's really just matching up um, the colors. And, you know, that there's purple and, and yellows and the, the greens. And I, I watched her push them around the table. I was like, wow, she's actually doing it. And even though she matched like a four with a four with the dots, it was really the colors and not the numbers. She was, oh, she can still count. She can count to 10. And we know that because when she walks up the stairs, she counts them. One, <laughs> two, and it takes like 12 minutes for her to get to the top of the stairs, you know, but it's hysterical. It's hysterical to watch. 
So I, we know she can count, but it's that. So I don't try the things I buy for her or try out. And so I took the ladies that gave me the two, the Dada Dar and the see. I took pictures for them that they could use on their website and stuff. And I was like, look, and they could just see, even through her mask, they could see she was really studying the pictures. So she loved it. I was like, wow, this is so cool. And um, so I hope to send them, you know, more stuff. Because, you know, I, I, A, I like supporting them, especially since they were occupational therapists and they certainly should know what they're doing. And the things that, that I, so they've partnered, I guess, with a lot of companies to, you know, focus on the different, you know, activities. But I just say, you know, never give up, you know, put something in front of them. And if they don't like it, perfect. Because I, I remember when, in our previous conversation when you were saying your mom didn't like all that stuff in your lap and stuff. My mom was never... Uh, somebody gave me like an apron thing that they could wear and then play with the zipper and the pocket. She doesn't like anything, you know, it's not you no know, article of clothing around her. So we did just, uh, it was warm too. So it was uh, like a blanket thing. So she didn't mind that. And it shows she did tie the strings that were on it and things like that. But, you know, she's never going to let you tie anything around her waist or anything like that. So you just have to try some stuff out. And if it doesn't work out, you go to the next thing. Because, you know, I get so many calls from frustrated people. Oh, I done tried everything. I give up. I'm like, <laughs> I don't think you tried everything. So the funniest thing was there's a, a file sorter that from the dollar store has six little, you know, container things. And, you know, you can stand the letters up in it. It's one of the old timey things. And I, I keep some files in it. So my mother was a secretary for 23 years in the federal government. So the, the group home owner says, well, tell us something about your mom that we need to know uh, or we should know. You know, what what was she like in the past? Like, oh, she was a secretary. And so she was like, and I said, so don't be worried if she starts sorting the mail. She was like, good to know. And so they ended up getting her one of these little mail organizers. So she takes the junk mail and she separates it. Into, so she could do that like all day long. And what was that? 99 cents. So you don't spend, you know, and she wants the things in the right place. And don't come by and take the mail out after she has sorted it because she will let you know. <laughs> I just did that. That's funny. You're like, oh. See, now my mom, it's like none of the stuff that she did. I mean, she raised my sister and I. So she was, you know, the traditional housewife. Mm -hmm. Mom, stay at home moms back then. Mm -hmm. And so the things that she did regularly weren't things she could do when she was in the care home. You know, yes. like yes, sores and yes. cook and clean and fold laundry. I mean, yeah, I think she, well, no, I don't think folding laundry would have worked. She just really liked to sit around and chat. It That's drove so me cool. Right up the wall. It was, like I said, it was uh, great. She could do it with um, <laughs> the other people. You but. know, and that's so, that's so, because if that works, that works really good too. And what's funny, I, and I also told them that for 10 years, my mom made sandwiches for the homeless at this uh, church that was across the street from her non-assisted living that she lived in first, before we had to move her to memory care. And, the lady, and I said, so if you need help with lunch, that girl can make a mean sandwich. The lady was like, oh, okay. So they would let Miss Dars you know, do the sandwiches. And she was so proud of her little self. She would cut the little edges off the bread. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I know. And so oh, and she really felt like she was doing something. And they, she loved it. And they loved it too, you know, watching her make the little sandwiches. And she would put like eight potato chips on everybody's plate. <laughs> And she she would count out the little potatoes because it was like five or no more than five or six of them. And in the house she's in now, there's six. And so she would take the little potato chip bag and she would put it on. She would go to each plate, one, two, three, four, five, six, and start over. One, two, three, four, five. And she'd make sure. And at the end, before she gave it up, she would look at all the plates. <laughs> and then everybody would get one cookie. One cookie. I mean, she, she is just a hoot. And I, you know, I say sometimes I think we make too much of the activities because we think it has to be all organized and stuff. Because if you look at a lot of the Facebook pages in particular with some of the activities directors, they just throw in a huge ball, away, especially when you had to be six feet apart. I saw some of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life on some of these, you know, memory care pages. It's hysterical. And, you know, I don't know where this woman got this. It was like a beach ball. So this huge ball. And because you couldn't stand close together, you know, it really had to be made to get it across the room. <laughs> and so they were all like 10 feet apart, hysterical. And they just had the time of their lives throwing that ball. So I, I was like, you know, I think initially at the start of the pandemic, everybody was just panicked by, oh, my mm -hmm. God, 
adult daycare is closed. Oh, what are we going to do? And so everybody just got all up and out. So I did this presentation, you know, it's like 40 slides plus on my show and tell. And I did that in less than two weeks because people were so panicked about that. And I said, you know, aside from the late stage with the five senses, then it's easy to remember that. Don't don't worry too much about the middle stuff because, you know, even the crossword puzzles, you know, she said, oh, my dad, you know, he's a PhD and he released these thousand piece puzzles. I was <laughs> like, okay, well, still get puzzles, but get the Alzheimer's puzzles, 36 pieces, 24 pieces, 16 pieces. Oh, okay. And they're not, they weren't childish either. They had extraordinary set. The one I got um, in 2019 for Christmas for my mom was, oh my God, this amazing scene of Paris with the Eiffel Tower lit up. And my mother did all 36 pieces by herself and was so proud. And it still took up a lot of room on the table. It was huge for just the 36 pieces. And I had planned on helping her, but she pretty much did it by herself. And so you don't have to take that love away if that's what they were. He just can't do the thousand anymore, but he can certainly still enjoy it. And so this particular day did end up getting that. And they're not that expensive. And, and again, you can get it on Puzzles to Remember, which I always do because it's a charity and most of the profit, it was created by a 17 year old originally whose grandmother had it. Now he's not in medical school. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's, I think he skipped college and right to medical school. He's brilliant. And then he sold it to a nine year old. I think Haley's now 10. And so they're doing all the profits for Alzheimer's. So I still do that, but they are cheaper on Amazon but I want to support their cause and all that, but they're still less than, you know, $25. So you don't have to, you know, spend the bank doing things. Cause I know I've given away um, to some of the adult day programs, the things that, you know, my mom can't use it anymore. And some of the fidget toys I had made for her out of the Lego bricks, I ended up, you know, tearing them apart and building something else. So, I mean, a lot of this stuff you can reuse, don't throw it away or anything like that, because you know all these adult day programs, they can help somebody else. So that's what I would say. And at least you feel like you didn't waste your money. So, that's and true. I always tell people, don't say, well, I wonder what stays in that. Don't spend all that time trying to figure that out. Just like you said, if they want to sit and chat, just sit and meet them where they are. Just chat, let her tell the, the story that she did told 803 times already. Just keep telling the story. Like I said, you don't miss it now. <laughs> but, nope. But, and I mean, we all got that story. So it's like, oh my God. But if that's what it takes, um, and you just give my mom, I don't care what kind of magazine it is, you know, Mechanics Today. <laughs> she, she, that, that's, you know, whatever's around the house, she will look at. And she stares at each picture like she really understands. Of course, she doesn't understand it. So now I just, you know, because she is in the later stages, instead of the just a general women's day is all the ones she used to love, I get either, you know, National Geographic, just the mostly pictorial ones, Smithsonian, you know, which I get in the mail anyway. And so, you know, now it's just a lot more for her to look at. So I just tailored it a little bit. And even the food magazine she still loves, because she, she loves food. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> Yeah, and the only thing that scares, scares me is that, you know, you don't want to eat the pages. So they pay really true. close attention. Yeah, that scares I, me a little. I think yeah. my mom would have liked that. Her visual mm -hmm. processing was just, it was, yeah. it was crap. It, yeah. you know, I think that's one of yeah. the reasons that she liked to sit around. And while I'm listening to you go through all these different options, which mm -hmm. a lot of them would, she probably wouldn't have done because... Understood. The, of the visual processing, but she liked mm -hmm. to sew. I mean, when we were kids, we had those mommy and me holiday dresses in the yes! bright seventies patterns. <laughs> and I look at those pictures and I cringe. <laughs> no girl, really. Yeah, now like, look at what? this. Let me see. Hold on. I'm just wondering if my mom, while you get that up, if she would have liked like the, not the real babyish sewing kits. Right. Oh, is that a, Oh yeah. Oh, those are I've recommended. Um, and this this is my reef light, and it's going this, and you can change the background color, you can change the color of the water, you can change all of that, which is really cool. And it's just like an aquarium because if you tap on the glass, they swim faster, like they're like you're feeding them. And so, so it's, it's not really, actually it's, totally a, oh, it's not a live stream. Mm -mm. It's an app, and so when you so it's just my where my this is my caregiver app page. So when you um, <laughs> tap on it. Yeah, they just start swimming. It's just an app. See, now I don't know if my and mom this is, And this is the free version. There's a paid version, which you can choose. And look at that black and white fish. That thing is gorgeous. I have no idea what that. My mother loves the colors of these fish. The fish in here, I don't know what these things are, but they're amazing. And 
she will just look at that and we'll and I have an iPad too. So you know, whenever we visit again, like on the when we did the backyard business, I would take my iPad, which serves as my second camera right here. But um, I take that and then she can see it bigger on the screen. But boy, does she love this. Yeah, that and app said, is really look, colorful. Look at that. Look at that one. Oh, you look might, at that one. So it's you really might cool. want to look at the Monterey Bay Aquarium does. Yep. Me too, but not in like a hundred years. I think I'm going to add it to my list for when, maybe this I know, summer. When they open up. But is, they is do that an some, hour away too? No, it's about three. Oh, that, oh, that is. That's a hour. that's a more of a weekend getaway. But they do live camera streams, so they'll have yes. like the jellyfish cam. <laughs> and isn't they, that cool? I. That's Every time cool. they do it, I think I got to go and look at it on like 85 inch screen TV yes. because yes. look at that on my little iPhone is it's nice, but it's not the same. Isn't yeah. that cool though? And I've told people, it's like, you know, this would probably be a good thing to share with somebody who's, who's yes. sundowning. Yes. It's like the jelly cam is so calming. so calming. Yes. And it, you know, on our worst days, mom was really good at you know looking at things you know like that so uh we have the panda cam here you know in dc and he's this big now or this big and so uh, they've been showing lots of pictures of him now so you know like you said it just as long as it's visual she can't do the you know i have the coloring apps too but in the early stages you know it's to die for so you just um you just take your finger and color it in she doesn't have that kind of dexterity you know at all anymore but you're kind of like oh it's so it's pretty cool to to find something you know really cool to color and it's like oh that's pretty neat but you can't you know as long as you you know can help them with something you know it's good and and they can just do but i don't think she has any dexterity some see the pictures are so small that yeah. you, know, you you wouldn't be able to get your you know fingers in there to do that but you know, I think when you are, you know, just which is why I created my own coloring book in the first place, because, um, you know, the other ones got too small for her and I got her the the fatter crayons, which really helped, too, because my, you know, my granddaughter had some of those anyway. And um, so, yeah, it's been it's been cool. So I don't you know, I don't stress a lot over it. I just, um, you know, find something that helps like that minute. And do you have the. Um, uh, the Relax Melodies app does that help you relax? Do you have that one? No, I actually listen. To, I listen to murder podcasts to go to sleep. Oh my god, that ain't gonna help. Oh my, so it actually does. I it's funny because oh my god, like, that was that was scary. I look too, I look at too much crime investigation channels. So that's what my degree is in anyway. But this is uh, has all the sounds and you what it what this you talked about sundown. This really works for sundown. So you turn on the different. This is the river, and then. The piano, mm. so you hear both. So the ones that are highlighted are the ones I turned on. And then the flute, I just added the flute. Oh, so you could pick, it's like a choose your own relaxation yes. sound. Yes, That's and cool. when you put it on pause, so what his was even more cool about it, since you mentioned Sundance. Now, the free version has about 25 sounds. So this is the paid version, it has more than 100. That's almost too Sounds. many to pick from. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, the, they have cicadas, which is hysterical. They have cicadas. They have fire. The, the campfire is lovely. The rain is lovely. They have a guitar. But here's what's special about it. You can record the ones, um, save it on a playlist. So the ones when we were riding in the car, the ones that would calm her down the fastest, I would play that one again. And she would say, my song, when it came on because she recognized the sounds that she picked. And so you just play it like a thing. But I have friends, there's timers on them as well, a bedtime timer. I have friends that cannot, cannot go to bed, go to sleep without it. So it plays whatever sounds you geared up and then it cuts off in like the 30 minutes or 60 minutes, whatever. And you, you fast asleep by then. It, it, it's stunning. And they on their on the uh, download stores, the Apple Store, the Google Store, whatever it is, uh, it, they have more than like eighty million people have downloaded this app. That's how wow. many have. What's Re the name? Relax Melodies. Relax Melodies. It's I will quite, put a and link. And the waterfall is really neat. I mean, so you got the guitar, and then the storm. You hear the thunder. It's 
way cool. But I really loved being able to save her favorites and, you know, play them again. And she liked the campfire. And then you just unselect them when you want to um, get rid of it. You just um, take that sound off and then start over. So, but it's really, because one of my all time, you know, favorite things. But she will say, you know, fire. And I don't know how she knows campfire because, you know, we never went camping when I was little. But she can you know, do that. So you hear the guitar and the campfire. That's all you hear right now. But it's, it's Which is kind of really, nice. Now, my really mom might have recognized campfire because we did go camping when I was a kid. See? And, and then we do really love that one. It's pretty cool. Well, and then we flew to Disneyland. I think I was uh, 11. My sister was eight, I think, Aww. and everybody fell in love with hotel camping. <laughs> yes, I tell you what, <laughs> that was the end of the. Right. That was that the was end of the, the trailer camp. in days. Yep, because I love my RV, but that's my granddaughter. So you got heavy rain. That's this one. So that one always makes me have to use the bathroom. I know, right? Everybody says that. She used to say that too. So yeah, I love this one, and but I just really loved being able to play. Um, you know, it says save mix at the bottom and then you would just save it. And then when you would get in the car or wherever doctor's office, cause you know, I had a little headphone for her and then you would just put, um, pick mom's mix and off you go. Yeah. And, I and I had to... them, I had them numbered the ones, you know, she liked one, two, I had like 10 and then, um, I would play one and, and it was like a drug. She would just, cause you know, in the car, when they would get back, I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to go home. You're like, and then you just push the button and she would go. It was That's just like funny. a drug. It was, it was it was stunning. So, you know, I, I did some work to, to make all that work. But, you know, I, I just believe we really can do anything. So I hope I at least gave you some ideas and your listeners. And <laughs> if they didn't get ideas from this, man, they, they need to play this from the beginning again. <laughs> I know, right? But it's, I mean, it's so much fun. And like I said, I, I do regret. I, I put this together not only because you know, during the COVID, everybody's daycare place was closed. But I also did it because I think I just made a lot of mistakes. Um, she didn't want to, very much like your mom, she would say when we, I tried putting in an adult daycare for a little, a little while, she hated it. And she hated it because they wanted her to do something every five minutes. And, and I don't know what your state is like, but here in Maryland, you know, they track the seniors that participate in these activities. So my mother was screwing up their numbers because she wouldn't do anything. <laughs> she, she didn't play bingo. She wasn't doing that. So they, when I took her out, they were so happy to see her go. Because I was like, you know, one day they called me at work and said she refused to get on the bus. I was like, what? And so I went over after work. I was like, you don't want to go to daycare? No, I don't want to go. And I was like, you don't have to go. It's not, you know, I said, we can save the money. It's not free. No, girl, it is not free. She was, I said, well, what do you want to do? I want to sit here and read my magazine. Done. And she never went back, but I, it was because they wanted her doing something every hour. And that's just not who she was. So I just went to, as you said earlier, having lots of choices for them to pick from. Voila. And then, like I said, you, you realize, as long as you don't get frustrated that um, they, you know, not, you know, may not like something, you know, more than a month or so. You can just try something else after that. And you don't throw away what you, but they don't play with it because they might come back to it. You never know. But just don't get frustrated when, you know, because stupid things will get their attention. You know, the, uh, <laughs> you know, some scrap of paper on the table. You'll be like, I'll spend $10 on this thing and you're over there looking at whatever it was. So, yeah. So just don't get all frustrated when it doesn't go the way we think it should go. Or I love this We See game because there's, they, they, have like three or four kinds of games you can play with it, but you can also just sit there and do nothing. Just look at the pictures. What's so hard about that? So I don't get caught up in instructions and all of that. I just, you know, make something fun. That's really what it yeah. comes down to. So well, my Yay! mom liked, she liked to go on the bus that the, mm -hmm. the residents mm -hmm. had. Cause one mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. I showed up to visit and they're like, Oh, your mom went on the bus. I'm like, they on the what? field trip. Yes! Yeah, like, what do you mean my mom's on the bus? Huh? I never knew she ever, they never told me she went on these bus trips. Oh, you, didn't, you this, didn't have to sign? Oh, I had to sign a permission slip. Oh, I probably Every told them they could do whatever they needed to do with her. Because <laughs> it was like, whatever keeps her happy, just do it. And oh, that's so hysterical. She, she, yeah, I, I was like, okay. And we, the one thing that I 
wish I'd had a solution for is I like mm-hmm. to take her out for a drive. Yes. So we could, but she sat so low in my car. Yes. The woman was yes. like looking at the freaking door, oh, you, know? Oh. <laughs> you know, and, and if she okay. looked up, she, it was so <clears throat> funny. There was, um, hmm. she, she thought I was her best friend, which was yeah. fine. Yeah. And Oh. I, re- I think we were coming back from the doctor. So, of course, my mom was good for this when I was a teenager. So it shouldn't have shocked me. <laughs> she, always, she didn't remember that her husband was gone. Okay, right. that was fine. I didn't right. tell her that my dad had died over, you know, her husband died. That would be cruel. Right. And so we're driving along and all of a sudden she's like, it was really sad when your dad died. And I was like, I dang near had an accident. Whoa. And, and oh I was God. just clear out of the blue. And of course, while I'm driving, you know, because it's like, oh, like no. pardon me while I crash into this tree. And it was literally maybe two minutes. And the next thing I know, she's like, I just love how blue the sky is. And yes. I'm like, well, I guess yep. that's over. And so yeah. she was always talking about, oh. you can see contrast really well. Yeah. And, and her and other Diane, one time they were commenting about the trees that they could see over the roof line. If they were standing yeah. in the courtyard, they could see. <laughs> and so one day I took her out front of the memory care portion of the um, residence. Mm-hmm. And we just looked at the trees and we would go. We're blessed to be. We got like two regional parks yep. and we would go to one of them and, and walk. But she, because of her visual processing, one, she'd watch her feet Yes. Sometimes she'd watch her feet to the point where yes. it's like, you know what? You know what's going to happen? You're going to go where your eyes are looking. So yeah. you're going to land on your noggin on the ground. Yeah, and she true. would try to step around shadows, including her own, which was yes. hysterical. <laughs> it was yeah. like, that's scary she, when they do that. Yeah. So oh. I finally had to stop taking her yeah. any place that we had to walk oh. very far, which then we, that's when we started going to parks and watching kids, which I'm very that grateful that she just, you know, it was smart, nice man. because I could sit outside and enjoy the nature and get sunshine mm-hmm. and listen to the kids. And she was just happy to sit there and watch the kids. I was starting to get pretty good at answering emails on my iPhone. You know, yeah, I pre- see? I, I'm old school. I kind of prefer being able to actually type with fingers. I understood. So, but you I, did good. <laughs> I, I learned how to dictate them and not not make her think I was talking to her. So that yes. you know, there's there's a lot of options. It was definitely not exciting i knew she was happy but i wished i'd had some more of these ideas that you've shared Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that we could have um engaged together a little bit more that's and i think a lot of people say that that little thing i tell you about making the quotes and you know playing that kind of game where they match it up and they love it when they get it right but i also did a lot of um profession ones so i was doing this adult daycare thing. I took some Lego suit with this guy that used to be a construction worker. So I bought him a little squeeze ball, a construction hat and the crossing guard. I bought her the traffic light and they all <laughs> just squeeze it in the construction guy. He loved this little thing. So I have all of these things for a lot of the occupations. Um, I have the police car, of course, you know, my husband was a cop. And, and so whatever I think, and you know, my big bag of tricks, whatever I think, you know, works from time to time. That's what I have tried to do, you know, to it. It's really just about engagement. But it's so funny about the bus because one of the things that they've done doing, I, I just applaud them that they've done well during the pandemic is that they would get them all on the bus and go nowhere. So they would pack a lunch and they would go down to, um, there's a place called National Harbor where they can see the huge Potomac uh, River. And uh, they would sit there overlooking the uh, river and they would eat their sandwiches and their cookies and turn around and go back home. And then they went, the furthest they went was Skyline Drive, one of the national parks, Shenandoah National Park, and watched the leaves change in October. And that was, that was an hour and a half away, but there's, you know, bathroom on there and everything. But um, nobody got on the bus, nobody got off the bus. They just watched, you know, sat in the overlook and watched all the pretty leaves and like, hey, ooh, ah, you know, turn around and came home. And so I, I do applaud them for, you know, being able to, you know, still get them out and, and things like that. But, you know, you can only do what you can do in this, you know, pandemic. So I've done a lot of Lego things about the pandemic. So this is the the um, virtual visits. This got a lot of hits on LinkedIn. <laughs> this us looking through the glass, you know, at each other. She said, where did I find a gray haired Lego person? So uh, my, I got gray hair and she has gray hair. That's so but cute. it's so, so she's, cool. She's showing so she us basically 
Lego people. One looks like it's in a box and the other one is looking yep. through the box. She's behind the drawer, yep. She's behind the little open door, but it's cool. Everybody loved this. And then there's the caregiver standing outside to make sure we don't come in. So <laughs> there she is. <laughs> and she's carrying a green stick because I give them so much credit. And this actually looks like the caregiver too. It really does. And what's cool about it is, you know, I think they've done such a great job of keeping them engaged in, in the now year that they've been in there, locked with them. So it's just, just been quite the thing. I, and they just got their second vaccine, so I can't wait until. So it'll take two weeks, and then it be, should be you know, warming up quite a bit here. And so uh, the rumor is that we'll be doing um, the backyard visits again by the uh, middle of this month. So that's what we're hoping for. They got the vaccine on Thursday, the second one. So awesome. we should yeah. be come the middle of March. They should be good to go. And everybody, you know, everybody got it. So that's we good. should be on. Yeah. So we should, you know, we'll see. We'll see. But, I don't you know. My mom decided she wasn't going to put up with this lockdown stuff and she died March 31st. You know I think I, it was a blessing. I, I, girl, mm, I do. I, I just, you know, lost a church friend to COVID and, uh, you know, he had Parkinson's too. He went there for something else entirely, got it in the hospital and died. Mm. And, uh, well, so my mom his, died from died from Alzheimer's when I got yeah. her death certificate. I That's read what it. Said. Yeah. It, well, basically, See? it was not eating or drinking. Yes. As a result, that part, I of did. A, I, I did remember that. Yeah. Yeah. As a result of advanced Alzheimer's, <sighs> is what it said. Because I'm like, I it's. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. I wanted her death certificate to say that's what she died from. I mean, it's I, true. I agree. I agree. Because I to me, it's, agree. it's a historical document, and I that agree. needs, you know, she didn't get COVID or any of that stuff. Even though I she hate when they it. say it's something other than the Alzheimer's because that's really what it is. Did you know she wasn't eating? I knew, I knew she was starting to have trouble. I didn't okay. realize okay. that they um, were feeding her more often. But the last, oh. the last day that I saw her awake, she went to the hospital on March eighth. I saw on the 8th, the 12th, the 14th, and the 16th. Mm -hmm. On the 16th, you know, because she broke her leg, so she's bed bound. Yeah. And they put the bed table over with the food on it. And she's literally yeah. Yeah. feeling around on the table. And it's like, how wow. can you touch the table in every possible place and not touch the dang plate? It was just insane. And she just... It was, you could tell her brain was forgetting yeah. how to eat. Yeah, yeah. And then, then they, then they closed down for two weeks and about a week and a half into that two weeks, I was like, I have gone nowhere because there's no place to go. <sighs> and my husband was going to the grocery store. I mean, I was literally about to call the executive director and say, I'm coming in. Uh, do you want me to cramp through the window? Do you want me to wear hazmat suit? I'm coming in because I was really concerned that she would forget I was quote unquote her best friend that she'd known forever and ever. <laughs> and that she, her combativeness yeah. and her yeah. huge resistance to help would just, mm -hmm. you know, just morph into just yeah. amp ma magnitudes worse. And yeah. so they called me on March 29th and said, oh, she's not doing so well. We think you she'd she'd do well with a visit from you. And I was like, oh, thank God. And then I went the next morning and saw her and I was like, yeah, this wow. is this is not going to yeah. end well. This is when I was like fine with the wheelchair. I had learned how to transfer people okay. in and yep. out of chairs. I've tried to do that with my grandmother, who will be 103 at the end of March. Whoa. She would rather I yank her up by her arms, which makes me insane because it's not I good know. for either one of us. That's so I was, crazy. I was like, oh, this will be great. I can push mom to the pool or the library, wherever the kids oh. are, man. We can chase the kids in the wheelchair. She can hold the dog leash and I could push the chair and she could hold the dog. I was like, oh, this will be great. But no, she, yeah. she decided that the increased the rent and the COVID thing and all, it's like, Too much. I mean, I, I don't know that she ever even knew any of that was going on, but I, I like to think that if she'd had a moment of clarity, she That's would have looked want, at what, girl. what reality was looking like at that moment. Yeah. And she would have been like, I'm, I'm not out. having none of this. <laughs> yeah. I, and if my mother could think that way, that's absolutely what she would do. She would not want to, 
you know, live this way. But what's funny is that, you know, everybody gets too much joy from her because she's hysterical. They called me today. I was on the treadmill after work and I, you know, and I almost fell off the treadmill. So she was refusing. They, they wanted her to go downstairs, put a little feet up. Um, and there's a TV in her room and they put on Jeopardy or whatever else, Wheel of Fortune, you know, those really visual things. And so, um, so um, she didn't want to watch, which is very unusual. So they says, you know, where do you want to do? And of course, she starts to, I want to go home. I want to go home. So, so the lady says, where is home? And she says, well, she has not said in years, Washington, D.C. That's my home. And the lady was like, well, so she calls me. She was like, guess what she just said? And so we were laughing about that. Like, wow, she had said that in a minute. And when I first moved her, I couldn't afford anywhere for her in D.C., anywhere. And we were yeah. fifth generation Washingtonians, but I couldn't afford a thing. So I moved into Maryland where I live. And when we first would go into Walmart or wherever, and we'd be standing in line, she would tell people, Retta moved me from D.C. I'm like, nobody cares, Mom. Nobody cares that I moved you. <laughs> That's funny. I was like, girl, stop. So, yeah, it's just, you know, I think we, I mean, we've just had so many lives. But I almost fell off the treadmill when she told me what she said. But uh, she did eventually go and watch her little show. But, um, but yeah, it's, you know, I, I agree with you. I think my mother certainly wouldn't want to live like this, but they get such a big kick out of you. You never know what she's going to say. And so she's hysterical and they just, they love her to death. So, um, you know, I think that's the blessing, but I am getting all my little stuff organized since I, that's the rumor that started today that she's getting ready to put the email out that we can come back. And she paid a fortune to have this humongous debt put on the back of her house um, she had a little small patio pre-COVID, and at least five families can get on that deck. That's how big it is. Wow. Yeah. And so, like, November 7th was the last time we could go. It was 70 degrees that day. Everybody was there. And everybody had their own little corner. It was crazy good. And, November uh, 7th in Maryland was 70 degrees? It, it, it was a, just because the day, the, the Halloween, it was only in the 50s. But the, the, a week later... People are like, why couldn't this have been Halloween for the kids? It was 68 degrees that day. Yeah? And wow. everybody flocked over there outside. That was our last um, visit. Wow, that's a long and so, time. And so now we're just waiting for this. But yeah, I, that's, that was the story today. I got a little note. And I was like, woohoo. So that was exciting. So, you know, we'll see what it brings. But, you know, my job basically then is to just, you know, find these little things that, you know, she can do as we sit outside. So I'm stacking up my little magazines. So the first visit, you know, I'm going to be there first thing, whatever, March 22nd, whatever it says. So I'll let you know. (laughs) Awesome. I'm looking forward to hearing about that. So we want, we want bright colors, visual. Yes. And keep in mind the five senses. The five senses when they get to the later stages. And in the beginning, just keep up with this normal, you know, things, exercise, the puzzles, even if you have to reduce the, you know, the number of the pieces of the puzzle, but just continue to do their regular activities until they can't do it anymore. Don't stop those kinds of things. And um, just try to have as much of variety on hand as you can. And don't spend a fortune. Look for things that is already around the house. If you'd be shocked at how many entertaining things are in your house that you have not thought of. That's probably <laughs> that's, true. That's the funniest thing. You know, even this, um, I have this, uh, I don't know what you call it, riser on my desk that, you know, you can put your second monitor on or whatever. And um, one lady in the group home, her mother keeps taking, she has one too. So her mother keeps taking it and walking around and she thinks it's a TV tray. Remember them TV trays? Oh, yes. from <laughs> <laughs> so she so keeps funny. putting it. So the daughter said, so I just let her keep it. And so the daughter, you know, put her, just put her, um, her work computer on a file cabinet or something. And the mother walks around the house with her little TV tray, she calls it, but it's a you know a computer stand or whatever. But yeah, so, I mean, you just have no idea what will appeal to them on a given day. So I just let them do whatever they want to do and go with that. So, but I'm so happy you had me on. This is awesome. Yeah, and I'm this glad has been that we great. were able to share some stuff with you me, that they me love. Too. But I will keep you updated. <laughs> awesome. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.